I recently watched some speedruns and they usually go like this. Freeman, the car's all ready for you. And then I thought, why not combine all of these bugs together into one single game? So I directly got started and created a new project. Since you can't see yourself anyway, I just use this bean as a player. Then I created a simple movement controller, but for a speedrunning game with intentional bugs, this is a bit slow. And I also don't have any bugs yet. Oh, never mind. So I searched the internet for a better player controller and found a tutorial from this Danny Gamer. guy. <clears throat> Hippity Hoppity Carlson is now my property. Danny's player controller is already a lot better, but you can't really have much fun on this tidy platform. So I tried out Pro Builder and created a first level. In this level, you can take two paths. Either you use the boring stairs and go along the long hallway, or you just glitch through the walls here. But before I implement that, I have to change these terribly looking grey walls. So I drew some pretty pictures, put them on the walls, and now it looks a lot nicer. Also a bit creepier, but uh, whatever. But how do I glitch through the walls? In Zelda Breath of the Wild, there are two ways you can glitch through walls. Either you do this, or you use bombs. Since bombs are the obvious choice, I quickly googled how to make bomb. FBI, open up! Instead of bombs, I hopped into Blender and made some explosive barrels. For the explosion, I made a nice boom effect and I'm pretty happy with the result. Since you probably also want control over the barrels exploding, I've added a method that checks if you're looking at an item and if you press F, it triggers the explosion. <laughs> Oops, that works a little too well. Since I want you to get through that wall specifically, it would be also nice if you could move the barrels around a bit easier. Luckily, I already have a pickup script from my other game, wishlist on Steam where now you can pick up the barrel and put it here and explode it and glitch through the wall. And I sure hope picking up items won't introduce any new glitches. But just to be safe, I added this uh, subtle hint uh, so you don't yeet yourself out of the map by accident. Oh, and if it doesn't work on your first try, you can also spawn more barrels using this. For the next level, you get this duck. Instead of exploding, it does work. The bug this time is once again inspired by a Zelda speedrun. There's a bug in Zelda where if you hop on a monster during slow down time, you get completely yeeted away. Slowing down time is actually quite easy. I literally just need this one line of code. In normal time, the duck just slightly pushes you away if you jump on it. But if you press shift and slow down the time, this happens. The third level is really long and there's a lava pool in the middle, so you can't just go to the end without using one of the most famous glitches, accelerated back hopping. This bug exists in multiple games, but one of the first was Half-Life. In Half-Life 1 you could move really fast by jumping in a very specific way, called bunny hopping. But since the devs didn't like fun, they tried to fix this for Half-Life 2 by applying a backwards force every time when you landed. They did fix bee hopping with this, but accidentally created a way faster method to move at the same time. You see, when they told speedrunners you can't do forwards bunny hops anymore, speedrunner said okay and discovered that the backwards force is always applied when you do a jump. So if you jump backwards, <laughs> you get really fast. I've modified the movement controller similarly and it should now work, in theory. The problem is I'm pretty terrible at doing the back hops because you need to time the jumps pretty perfectly. Since other people might also have this problem, I decided to make it easier for everybody. Now if you just hold the space bar, you will always hit that jump perfectly. And well, let's say you can now move really really fast this way. For the next room, I wanted you to be able to duplicate items. Item duplication has literally existed since games even used items. So for a change, this bug is totally not inspired by Zelda. Because the first time items were duplicated was when a player named G Sus discovered the bread slicing glitch that could be used to skip the three day long cave cutscene. Since item duplication is usually not a really straightforward mechanism, 
I'll just give you this cloning device, where you can put an item on one side and it gets cloned to the other side. Remember this? And I sure hope picking up items won't introduce any new glitches. I noticed that the pickup function kinda breaks the whole level. Instead of using the duplicator to duplicate stuff, you can just use the duplicator to fly. <laughs> Generally, you could probably skip a lot of levels this way, but I decided to not fix it because, well, I think it's fun. But this level is still missing one thing, ragdolls. Because no matter which game, ragdolls are stupidly funny. Luckily, I could just steal them from my other game. And what's better than one ragdoll? Lots of ra- <laughs> First of all, <laughs> help? Uh, Second of all, uh, should I fix this? Uh, um, I think for my own sanity, I will have to fix this. <laughs> but not just because of me, but it also can break the pickup mechanic, basically trapping you in this level. But uh, let me know if you think I should keep it anyway. But to be honest, I think <laughs> the pile of humans is just way funnier. Uh, just in case, some of these bugs happen again. I implemented an escape menu where you can restart the level or the game if everything breaks. Now let's jump to the next bug. In Super Mario World, you can finish the whole game in just 40 seconds. You can do this by literally reprogramming the game by doing extremely specific moves. This is called arbitrary code execution. By doing an undefined move, the game reads a function from the open bus lane, which in return calls malfunctions depending on your ROM and ROM. And by doing this, you can directly skip to the ending using a level loading function. Oh, and if you don't have a degree in computer science, it's basically like if a kid does a Fortnite dance specifically on top of this Wendy's and instead of being a disappointment to their parents, the kid breaks our universe and now every star turns into Robux. For a better explanation, check out this mad lad who did the speedrun. Since I am obviously no genius, I just left this room empty. You'll have to figure out yourself how to get up there. Until now, I only got inspired by the any percent speedrun category. But a lot of games have a lot more categories with very interesting bugs. For example, this Zelda speedrun. Yeah, Zelda games have a lot of fun glitches. This Zelda speedrun takes roughly 15 hours to finish. The category is that you need to use the least amount of items possible. And you can save yourself an item by looking at rupees for 15 hours straight. Yes, really. Because the rupee animation is very slightly bugs and makes you move extremely slowly in one direction and you can glitch through the walls this way and we're through let's go i drew a pretty picture of money but looking at money alone is honestly a bit boring so i've decided to add a bonus bug inspired by portal this elevator. The problem is that elevators are really buggy. I noticed that the faster I move the elevator, the buggier it becomes. So I sadly had to make it really really slow. And since the elevator now takes over a minute, I wanted to create some calming elevator music. I hopped into my sound studio and took some time to make the perfect elevator jingle. This is what I came up with. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, the elevator takes over a minute, so I hope you find a way to skip it. Since we are already talking about Portal, I decided to add a little puzzle to the next level, where you have to figure out how to open this door. Though I'm not gonna spoil anything anymore. I'll also keep the last level a secret, but guess what? The goal is to go through as fast as possible. Now that the levels are finished, I still needed to add some spice. So I recorded some sound effects using stuff I had lying around, like my mouth. Woof. And I learned that doing these noises sounds really wrong. Since I didn't want to make this kind of game, the ragdoll now also does duck noises. Some levels aren't super intuitive, so I decided to add a little small side story that also gives you hints along the way. Hey, so thanks for helping test out this game. Uh, finally, I added a title screen, and since the game kinda sounds like an ASMR video at the moment, I also added some music.
And now that the game is finished, I let the people in my Discord channel playtest the game. And yeah, there were still a lot of bugs that needed to be fixed. One of them allowed you to fly by hitting the spacebar exactly when starting the game. And I also found a couple of others that were either annoying or broke the game entirely. So most of the bugs that are now in the game are definitely put in there by me. If you find any bugs that you think are not deliberately in the game, just pretend they are. Also, during the playtest, multiple people have asked why Windows Defender is saying that my game might be a virus. The reason is that Windows is a f Anyway, you can download the game with a link in the description and I can't wait for you to find all the bugs and maybe even beat my time. Maybe see you next time. Bye!